Hello everyone and welcome back to our tutorial series walking through custom items, the premium spigot plugin that allows you to add custom items to your spigot server without having to modify your client. Uh, this is kind of the first big milestone for any of our plugin development, which is custom textures. You've been making something really cool for your server and the very last thing is that you want it to look cool. Uh, so we're gonna get started with that today. As usual, we're going to be starting off in the custom items wiki because we're going to be building off of some of these custom item example files that we've uh, downloaded before in the past. I've got those prepped right here. There they are. When we unzip them, we're going to head into the new section that we haven't been touching lately, which is this CUI resource pack. Now, for those of you that have worked with resource packs in the past, these are kind of like the old texture packs, but can add even more functionality to a Minecraft server, usually downloaded as a zip file and located in your .minecraft folder. Resource packs tell Minecraft how blocks should look and act. They don't necessarily modify the blocks, but instead simply interpret them. So if we move this CUI resource pack into our resource pack folder, there are a few things that we might notice, and there are, there are a couple things I want to introduce you to. Very first, in case you're unaware, pack MC meta files are what tell Minecraft how to kind of work with this. It often defaults to four, but since I'm working with Minecraft 1.15, the code to make this compatible would be five. Four would be 1.14 and three would be 1.13. You can look up those codes for whatever version you're building this for, but any version below 1.14 will probably be built differently in this video probably won't help you. But for current and upcoming uh, versions, this should be just fine. So we want our pack format to match our Minecraft version or else it'll give some sort of error when it tries to load it. And then optionally, this pack PNG file is the image that is associated with actually loading it uh, in the uh, Minecraft client's resource pack list, which this would likely be optional since you're pushing it from a server side perspective, but if you wanted to throw it in there as an explanation, that's fine. We're going to be digging into the assets. These Minecraft assets are what actually determine what our custom items look like. Now, we've been on this kind of test server that I've been running here. We've been working with our purple apple throughout this series. The purple apple has been an item that we've customized. We gave it a custom picture, texture. We even made it do some custom stuff like extra saturation and absorption. But it doesn't look purple. It looks like a normal apple, which is a bit disappointing. Today's the day we're gonna change that. So in our purple apple, I've added a new line. It's a line I actually took away a little bit ago, uh, but it's texture ID one. This is going to tell the custom items engine that instead of being a normal apple, we should tell the user's resource pack that this is apple type one. Now, the vanilla default type of apple would be unaffected, but the texture ID of one is going to, uh, we are going to be building the resource pack to interpret that and then add an alternate texture for if this is apple type one or apple type zero or like original. So that's all we need to do in our server item file, our YML file for our purple apple. But what about the resource pack? Now, I have this CUI resource pack already in my .minecraft resource packs folder, and I'll be editing it from in there, and I recommend you do the same. We are going to be starting off, we're not going to work with block states yet, because we're working with items, not blocks today. Uh, we're going to start off in models, because models are kind of the programming that tells your resource pack what this item should look and act like, as well as what textures to apply. I know you're very tempted to dive into textures because, oh, I want to I wanna make things look cool and, and, and change the texture of it. All in good time. So we're going to head into models, and, well, we're working with items, not blocks. If you're unfamiliar with building resource packs, this is all following the kind of default or vanilla Minecraft structure for a resource pack. Here I have a resource pack that is essentially just uh, uh, kind of acting like or is the vanilla Minecraft resource pack pulled out of Minecraft itself. Uh, and if we look in the uh, assets for Minecraft here, we can go into the models and see that there's a, you know, a few different options. But one of the first things you'll notice is that the little icon, the little, the, or the, the model data for any item in Minecraft would normally be in here. And when we're working in Minecraft, that's what this is. This default resource pack is, uh, sorry, one second, it's right here. 
So that default resource pack is right here telling Minecraft what to do with every single little thing that shows up. We want to be building our resource pack to kind of go on top of it and say, okay, uh, we have some custom things to do before you get to the default actions, but we're gonna not gonna do that yet because we haven't built it yet. So let's get started with that. Uh, wrong window there we go so we're back in our cui resource pack for uh minecraft and over here in models we're gonna head over to items now i highly recommend building your custom items resource pack off of the example because a lot of the work is already done for you it's a lot closer to being plug and play otherwise you're gonna have to try to kind of cobble something together if you're already using a server resource pack and you like don't want to start from scratch even though i would recommend migrating your server resource pack into this one you could also do it the other way around but at your own risk so here's the deal this location for models and items in vanilla minecraft would be where all the info for what to do with this stuff is now for example we've got diamond hoe right here if we go over here to diamond hoe we can look at what default Minecraft does, and big surprise, when it's a handheld item, the texture is going to be sourced from item Diamond Ho. Well, let's see what Custom Items is doing. Ho! There's kind of a difference, but the main difference is that Custom Items is providing this override. Now, to avoid any long-term explaining, that texture ID that we gave our purple apple, this texture one, that's what this is right here. And it's gonna apply model one. But wait, this is item diamond Ho. Our apple is built off of the Minecraft item of apple. So it, it's not gonna have anything to do with diamond Ho. So here's the catch. If we wanna build a completely custom texture from our item, we're going to have to see, we can kind of think about it like this. Oh look. Uh, the normal Minecraft texture for Apple is this right here. So what we're going to do is we are going to take our example file for Diamond Ho and we're going to copy it and rename it Apple. How did I choose Apple? Because that's what it normally is in vanilla Minecraft. Honestly, it's just the item data. You don't need like the vanilla Minecraft resource pack, even though that is what we're building it off of. Uh, it's pretty much always the just the normal Minecraft ID. So I chose Apple because we're building this off of Material Apple. And when we do that, there's a couple other things we need to edit inside. When the Apple is handheld, the item, the default texture shouldn't be Diamond Ho. That would be weird. It should be Apple. Pretty straightforward, nothing hard there. The only other thing is down here. When our apple is custom model data one, which it will be because that's what we made our purple apple, custom model ID one right there, it's going to apply item slash custom slash diamond host slash model one. Well, where did that happen? That's happening right here in the model folder. See this models? Model item custom die ho model one. Well, okay, models item custom die ho model one. That's what it's currently referring to. But Again, I don't want to build it off of a diamond hoe. For my organization, I'm going to put Apple. This is now going to refer to the folder Apple. And in there, we're going to have our model one. Now, because I'm not planning on doing a billion, or not a billion, just a lot, of different things with Minecraft, uh, with the Apple models, I actually don't need anything else besides this. Now, totally optional. If you don't tinker with it, if you just leave it there, nothing will happen. But it, I think it helps kind of clean up the, the code, so to speak, of being able to see kind of uh, what we're working with. And then I could pretty easily just add extra lines to this since it is just two, two, three, three. It's pretty straightforward. So now this is telling vanilla Minecraft, oh, normally if you're holding an apple, make it look like an apple. But if custom items says that it's texture ID one for an apple, you should check this guy out to see what, how we should build that item, how we should make it look. So how should it look? When it is handheld, the texture is going to be item slash custom slash texture one. This isn't a model anymore. This is the model that is telling Minecraft what texture to use. Finally, we get to go all the way back in here. I'll actually keep this up so we can see kind of where we're going. 
we're heading to Minecraft Textures Item Custom Texture 1. Now, little uh, spoiler alert, this is kind of why we've been working on a purple apple this whole time, is because in the example files, Texture 1 actually already is a purple apple that is going to apply. It's a reskin version of the vanilla Minecraft. Purple apple, right there. What does this all mean? Technically, we're done. Okay, but my apple isn't purple. Well, we should probably actually apply the resource pack we just built. When we reload that, what should happen is now your Minecraft client recognizes that this is a Minecraft apple. You can see the data tag right there, except it also sees that MPT, NBT tag of custom item one applies this custom texture and now we have a purple apple fully functional just like normal but it's custom right there now you might be going well that's great but that doesn't feel too custom because they handed us that png i want to make something from scratch i want my own item well that's fine here let's do this i'm going to name this purple apple for storage and i'm going to edit this uh for Editing PNGs, especially for Minecraft, I have been using Paint.net. This is a free program uh, that is actually kind of like, I would almost compare it as a, uh, the free man's Photoshop of PNGs. Uh, what's nice about it is that unlike Microsoft Paint, it kind of has a lot more scalability and this transparency support. Uh, one of the ways I could actually show that off is kind of given a nice... There we go, kind of a nice see-through effect of this apple. As well as, I'm gonna use a brush to kind of give it a little bit of a pinkish glow in the middle. And then lastly, just to really make it obvious that I am kind of customizing it, I'm gonna put a little pink, you know, glint around it so that you can clearly tell that my custom textures are being applied. There we go. So I've applied this, the transparency does follow through. That's, that's probably the biggest thing that paint.net won me over with, is that that transparency will follow through. Well, okay, now I want purple apple to be that texture instead. So let's head into Minecraft models. We're still in our resource pack, item, custom, apple. And instead of looking at texture one, I want it to apply to purple apple. Now let's see if I've done this right. No guarantees, honestly. Well, it's not going to automatically update. We need to reload our texture pack. That can be as simple as just moving some stuff around so that it reloads from scratch. Uh-oh. Clearly, I've done something wrong. This is kind of the, the default image or data missing texture for kind of what's going on. So if I'm looking at this going, I've done, I've done this wrong. That, that's kind of going to be the result if something's missing. Well, the very first thing I'm going to confirm is I want to make sure that my texture is item custom purple apple. It is, but here's the other issue. Sometimes, at least in my experience, I, again, I'm not a resource pack pro. Uh, sometimes if this, if this is uh, too long of a name or if it's too unusual of a name, it won't work properly. To make it easier for myself, I'm going to do apple texture one. What happened here? I am now saying instead, I'm gonna rename this to texture one in a new folder called Apple. Because my texture one is already out here, my little default one. The other reason I'm showing you this is because not only is it really common to kind of feel like, oh, like I finally did it, and then you load it and you get these ugly purple black boxes. Uh, don't be afraid to kind of tinker around or try a few different things, especially if you keep kind of the original copies of stuff so that if you can't figure it out, you can kind of fall back to that. The other reason is to show you that inside the custom directory, you can add other folders to kind of however organization you want. Uh, let's show that working off. I will reload this. And voila, there is our purple apple. And as you can see, even the transparency of that item from, from paint.net actually f carries through as well. Minecraft does know how to actually handle and render such transparencies. So you can see that uh, you are able already, using what we've covered in this tutorial, 
to build your own custom items, either from scratch or just modifying vanilla textures. Most of my custom items, I started with the vanilla texture and kind of painted over it until it looked like how I like. There's also plenty to work with here. And it really is compatible with essentially any PNG. I mean, look at how big this one is. This isn't, you know, Minecraft 16 by 16. This is massive and Minecraft will know how to handle this. So don't be afraid to kind of tinker around with making your items look like stuff that you want. And Minecraft does know how to render it, so you don't have to do any extra work besides that PNG to get things kind of working. But the big step, just a nice last recap before we wind up, is that you are going to, in your server YML file, material and texture ID. That material, you are going to modify the model of in your resource pack. You're gonna to go to Minecraft, Models, Item, and then whatever material you chose, for us it was Apple, you're going to have this custom model data reroute to your custom model selection. That is where you direct it to whatever texture you use. That texture is then going to be applied solely to your custom items. So then the last major question, well, what happens if for some reason the texture pack doesn't work for my uh, user? The answer? it will fall back to the material or other available resources, which is why early on in these tutorials, uh, I made sure to remind you all that we want to build off of a material that makes sense. Purple Apple built off of Apple works out because now someone can see that, oh, okay, it's kind of a modded version of an Apple, that's neat. And then if, uh, you know, later they get their, I don't know, internet or hard drive or whatever fixed, whatever, you know, was stopping them from having their resource pack working, that's all there is to it, and now suddenly, bam, there's there's my purple apple. It's all set. Yay! So that's kind of a nice way to balance things out. So then the last major question, uh, how are they going to have this resource pack? What are How am I going to give this to them? There are a lot of tutorials on how to apply a resource pack to a server, but uh, so I won't go through all of it, but here's kind of my brief little introduction to it. So here's my, you know, server folder right there, and I've got server, you know, properties. I can open that with kind of any text editor. And when I go in here, there are some options to host a resource pack, but here's the catch. Uh, in order to host the resource pack, it needs to be at a downloadable location. Most uh, tutorials and users recommend something like Dropbox. I've heard a few people mention Google Drive might work. You just need a place that has a direct download link. Dropbox pretty easily manages that. Uh, the reason you need the download link is because uh, whatever is here, whatever link is right here. So this might look something like, uh, I'm just making this up on the spot. Uh, you know, and then a whole, a whole bunch of, you know, whatever. You know how links get. Uh, big link right here. And this is where, when uh, a user logs into your server, it will automatically apply this resource pack and download it uh, client side. So what that would end up looking like is essentially they log in with whatever resource packs they're using and then the, our custom one is going to be plopped right on top to make sure uh, that the only things that are affected are our custom item right here. Uh, to give you kind of an extra vote of confidence, here's an example of a resource pack. So let's say I'm using my, you know, ooh, I really love, you know, I'm, I'm a Minecraft player. I love my favorite resource pack right here. Oh, I like it. It's so nice. Yay. Uh, but, you know, as a fallback texture, normal Apple. Well, with that uh, server hosted resource pack, this guy's going to get plopped right on top. What does that mean? It's not going to change the user's resource pack files at all. It will only modify it for these custom ones. Uh, so it will use whatever we supplied specifically just for our custom resources right there. Whereas everything else, if it has been modified, will be. Uh, and then when the user, you know, logs off, that resource pack is dissolved because it was temporarily downloaded just for use on the server there. So uh, that wraps up getting started with adding custom textures to items. I know many of you are just itching to see uh, uh, custom textures on blocks and other things, uh, and that will be coming up in the next few videos. Uh, but for now, that should be enough to get started with a whole bunch of really cool kind of custom modeling and texture. Uh, I hope you enjoy and I hope you're enjoying this plugin. I will see you guys in the next video.